The problem reads for the reaction CaCO3 solid to CaO solid plus CO2 gas at 25 degrees Celsius, uh, delta G theta, actually at the standard state, is 130.4 kilojoules per mole. The change in enthalpy at the standard state is 178.3 kilojoules per mole, and the change in enthalpy is not a function of temperature. We're to calculate the equilibrium pressure of CO2 at 298.15 Kel, which is, of course, 25 degrees Celsius, and at 1100.15 Kelvin. So there's two problems here. The point that we can do this problem here is that these two are solids, and we're left with just the gas here. What does that mean? We know that the free energy change for a mole of reaction is delta G equal to delta G theta, standard state, plus RT times ln of K, where K is the equilibrium constant. And at equilibrium, delta G is zero, so this is zero, so we get delta G theta is equal to minus RT ln of Kp, and for ideal gases, Kp is the equilibrium constant of the reaction. So in the numerator, we have the product of the free energy of the products and at 1 atm divided by the product of the free energy of the reactants at 1 atm. And the convention is that P of a solid is 1 divided by atm. So what do we have here for Kp? So we see that we have delta G theta. We know R. We know T is 25 degrees. This is in, in Kelvin, so it's 298. And so then our hope is that we can get the partial, the partial pressure at equilibrium for CO2. And the reason we can do that is because these are both 1. So what we have is Kp is equal to all the powers are 1 because all the stoichiometric coefficients are 1. So on the right side, we have P of CaO, that's going to be a solid, to the, one, to the first degree, times P of CO2 to the first degree, divided by P of, on the left side, we only have CaCO3, but it's also a solid. So what we have is that this is 1 over ATM, 1 over ATM. So they cancel, and we're left with P of CO2. And this is actually what we want multiplied by 1 ATM, which is what we want. It's the equilibrium pressure of CO2. We have to multiply this by 1 ATM. Okay, so we are substituting and going to solve for this. So what do we have? Delta G theta is 130.4 kilojoules per mole equals minus 831146 joules mole Kelvin times 298.15 Kelvin times ln of P of CO2. Now we need to solve this for P of CO2. So we have ln of, we're just going to write P here, equals 130400 joules, and everything cancels, divided by minus 831146 times 298.15. Calculator. So one three zero oh, four zero oh, zero oh, divided by parenthesis uh, minus eight point three one one four six 
times 298.15 and the parenthesis enter. So we get ln of p is minus 52622. ln of p is minus 52622. That means that this is this has a, a base of e, so p equals e to the minus 52622. So we need e, so that's Right here, second function, e, and then we need second function, our answer from there, and then enter. So we have 1, 4, 0, e to the minus 23. So p equals 1, 4, 0 times 10 to the minus 23. And so the partial pressure. of CO2 at 25 degrees Celsius is 140 times 10 to the minus 23 and we multiply it by a standard atmosphere. So this is our answer to the first part of the problem. Now for the second part of the problem we have to calculate the equilibrium pressure of carbon dioxide at 1100.15 Kelvin. Notice that we have not yet used the second part of the information here. And we're going to use that now in a standard way. That is, we're going to find delta G theta at 1100 by using this information here. We do that by using our standard gibbs helmholtz equation. And remember that we we can transform this and write it as delta G theta equals, and then we're going to put this T on the other side, so minus T integral of delta H theta over T squared dt. Now the nice thing is because we've been told that delta H theta is not a function of temperature, that means it's constant with respect to this integral. So we can take it out. Many times it was not constant and we had to have the function inside with all its t's. So right now we can say that delta G theta is equal to minus T times delta H theta times the integral of dt over t squared, which is equal to minus t times delta h theta times the integral of this is minus 1 over t, plus we have an arbitrary constant of integration. Uh, the, we can write this as dh theta times minus t and 1 over t is 1, and so we have minus t times c here and we're looking for C using the information we have, and then we're going to calculate delta G theta at this temperature once we have that formula. So first we need to find this constant of integration, so delta G theta at 298.15 Kelvin is equal to delta H theta at that temperature. It really doesn't matter because it says it's temperature independent times 1 minus 298.15 Kelvin times RC. So here we have 130.4 kilojoules per mole. Here we have 178.3 kilojoules per mole. And here we have 1 minus 298.15 Kelvin times. So we have 130.4 divided by 178.3 is equal to 1 minus 298.15 times that constant that we're looking for. Get our calculator. We have 130.4 divided by 178.3. So that's at 073 
equals 1 minus 298 15 times C. So 298 15 times C equals 1 minus 073. And C equals 1 minus 073 divided by 298 15, which we will now find. So we need 1 minus our answer. That's 0 0.268. And then we need to divide that by 298.15. And we get 9.01 10 to the minus 4. So 9.01 times 10 to the minus 4. So at 1100.15 Kelvin, we want to calculate our new delta G theta. Delta H theta is the same, and we have 1 minus our temperature is here, and our C is here. So how much is delta G theta? So delta G theta at 1100.15 Kelvin is equal to 178.3. That's this, times 1 minus 1115 times 901 times 10 to the minus 4. So let's calculate that. So 178.3 times parenthesis 1 minus 1100.15 times 9.3. 01 and we need that EE there so second VE and we need minus 4 and end the parenthesis and enter 1.563 so delta G theta is 1.563 at 1115 Kelvin 1.563 kilojoules, kilojoules per mole, the same unit as it was. So now we need to put this into that other equation and get our partial pressure. So we have 1.563 kilojoules per mole equals minus 8.31146 joules per mole Kelvin times 1100.15 Kelvin times ln, and we remember, of P, of carbon dioxide. So ln of P equals 1563 joules divided by minus 8.31146 joules times 1115. So calculating that, 1563 divided by minus 8.31146 times 1100.15. 15, close parenthesis equals, so that's minus 0 0.17, minus 0 0.17, so P equals A to the minus 0 0.17, and let's get that, so remember we did second E, and then second answer, and we can end the parenthesis or not, enter, 0 0.843 0 0.843 so our partial pressure of CO2 at 1100.15 Kelvin is 0 0.843 atmospheres. And that is the answer to the second part of that problem.